Hey everybody, it's Tom. Today I want to take you through a super simple way of being able to install the Facebook Pixel across your website so that you're able to run really effective retargeting campaigns across Facebook's advertising network, create lookalike audiences so you can reach people very similar to those who are part of your Facebook Pixel audience, and then also be able to track conversions directly within the Facebook advertising infrastructure. Uh, we're gonna have a go at installing this today on WordPress, uh, but it's a very simple installation that's very similar, no matter if you're using things like Wix, Shopify, Squarespace, or something else, it's a relatively simple way of doing that. Uh, so what I wanna begin with very first off is showing you where you need to go first and foremost, which is we're gonna start all at facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash manager, M-A-N-A-G-E-R. And I want us all to start on this page here, which is going to be uh, our central pace for getting started. Once we're here, the first step that we need to take is in the top left, we'll see that it says adverts manager. I'm gonna click on that button there. Once I've clicked on that, I go over to the fourth column. Uh, this one, the one that's called assets, I go down to pixels. I'm going to then click on pixels. And then this has given me uh, a number of options that I can go and do here. First and foremost, I can go and create a Facebook pixel, the new kind of pixel. There is also a old conversion tracking pixel. Now this was used um, for a long time, but Facebook is starting to phase that out. And as of February of 2017, this one will be completely redundant. So I, I highly recommend to begin with, we start with creating the pixel. So first step that we're going to take, we need to create the pixel, install the code, and then choose the specific actions that our pixel is going to take, the specific events we want to fire. So first step, we're gonna click on the create a pixel button. We're going to go across and name our pixel, whatever we would like to call that. Um, so I can just leave that as a default. Moving into next, and what it's going to be doing here is actually setting up the, uh, the code that I'm going to then be using on my site. Okay, so that's all ready to go. So see, now I have two options. I can go ahead and if I wanted to, I could try using an integration or tag manager. So if I click on that one there, there's a number of options that it will give me. I could use Shopify, Google Tag Manager, Magento. So if I click on the Shopify one, you'll be able to see it's a little bit of an easier installation in that it's totally um, tailored for doing it on Shopify. But for us, we're just going to go straight ahead and click on copy and paste the code, which is option two here. And this is the one that we're most commonly going to use. So once I go ahead and I click on that one, the first step that I'm going to need to do, the first thing it's going to tell me to do is to Ensure that I'm setting this up in the header code of my website. So that's actually going to be in the HTML at the very, very top of my, of my page, of my web page. And I need to put it in between my opening of the head and my closing of the head tags. Very similar to where we put our page title and our meta description tags when we're looking at SEO. Uh, we're going to put it in a similar type of space. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to take the code and we're going to click on the code to copy it all to our clipboard. Now I'm going to go to my WordPress site and open up my admin. Just log in. Oops. Fix that one up. Take three. Okay, so within our WordPress site, there's two options we could use for actually installing this. The first requires uh, a little bit more tech know-how. I would only really recommend doing this if you know your way uh, around you know, being a developer, which would be to install it within your actual editor. We're going to skip ahead of that and go straight into installing it as a plugin. And the plugin that I use is called Tracking Code Manager. It's by IntelliWP. And so once we install this plugin 
and we activate it, it will allow us to insert in tracking codes for Facebook ads, Google ads, essentially anything that we're looking to track. We can run other retargeting through things like ad roll, even do things like Twitter retargeting through it as well. Very simple plugin to use. Once we've installed and activated that one, if we go down to the settings in our dashboard, we'll be able to click on tracking code manager where it comes up. So I'm just going to click on that one. Just going to remove my previous one in there. So we'll start from scratch. So we should all see a screen like this. If we go to the top left and go to where it says add new script. Click on that one there. Be able to see through in here that it's asking us to put in a new tracking code it's active by default so we'll leave that we're going to name this one just facebook base pixel we can name this one whatever we'd like something that we know now what we need to do is if we go back to our adverts manager we remember that we copied this code previously as we clicked on it through in there now what we're going to do is we're going to right click and then we're going to paste this code actually directly then into our tracking manager. So that's all the code. We don't need to touch this at all. I highly recommend just leaving it as is. Now down here where it says position inside the code, as Facebook said that we want to put this within our head, head tags, uh, we just need to leave this as the default, which is going to be before the closing of the head tag. We want to show on all devices. Now we want to ensure that we've got on here standard code tracking on our WordPress site. And then we're going to have this across our whole website. This one needs to be on every page of the site and we're not going to exclude any pages. So we'll leave everything else as its default and go to save. Okay, so that one's ready to go. We've set up our base pixel and now that's across the entire Facebook site. Now, the next thing that I want to go and do, and this is something that's now required to move through and successfully activate your pixel, is we need to set up a custom event um, that Facebook will then look for as part of the pixel to ensure that a certain event has been fired on our site. So you can see that there's a number of different events that it chooses, search, view content, uh, initiating a checkout, all the way into things like purchases and leads as well. Um, these are really custom events and we can use as many of them as we see fit. Um, but what we're going to do to begin with for today is we're just going to use the uh, the complete registration one down here at the bottom. Uh, there's three options that we can choose. We can choose basic, recommended, or advanced in what we want to do. So you can see here, there's some of the other ones. I'll just show you some examples of how that code looks. You can see that the code looks different on all of the different ones. What I want to do here, I want to just go to basic to begin with today. I'm going to click on that one there. This would just be a very simple setup of the code and that's all we're going to need to get started. So I'll just show you what my actual um, event is that I'm going to be tracking is on my site. So on my contact form, if I go to my contact form, when I go through and I complete the details on here, it will actually allow me that's all done. I've set it up so once somebody clicks on send, it redirects to a confirmation page. And you can see that one just says, thanks for getting in touch. And that's now the confirmation page. It's, it's its own unique page on the site. It's got its own unique URL as well, which is going to be tomwillis.com.au forward slash confirmed. So this makes it very easy then for me to be able to fire back an event to Facebook to say that this is when a registration gets fired. So the event that I want to use for this is going to be the bottom one, which is complete registration. And it's just a little bit of code there. Again, all I need to do is if I click on that, it's going to then go ahead and it's going to copy that to my clipboard. Once I've that, got that on my clipboard, I can then head over to the tracking code manager again, and I'm going to add a new tracking code. So this time I'm going to run through and do things in the same type of way. So I'm going to give that its own name. So I'm just going to call that one form completion. I go through, I can again, just right click and paste to include in my tracking code. Now that that tracking code's in, it's ready to go. Don't need to again, edit anything there. 
This time, however, I want this to be not in the head of the page. I actually want to include this one after the body, which will mean that the whole page needs to load first before this actually fires. So we'll choose the second option, which is after body. Standard code tracking on the WordPress site. This time you can see that I could have chosen in the whole website, but for this particular example, I just want it on my confirmation page. So I'm going to choose in specific pages or posts. And then through in here, what it requires me to do is include the specific page that I want this tracking code on my site. So if I click on include posts, you can see by default it's got all. It pulls in all the names of my pages and the one I want is the confirmed page. I select that one. If I remove then the all, it's only going to fire this event now on my confirmation page, which is exactly where I want it to be so that it's not thinking that anyone visiting any page of my site is a confirmed uh, registration being completed. So that's all I want for this one. I don't need to edit anything else in there. I don't need to exclude it from pages. I'm ready to go. So I hit on save. And that's it. So now I've got my foundations and everything that I'm going to need to be able to successfully track and use my Facebook pixel on my website. So the next step that I want to take from here is essentially, I want to ensure that it's working the way that I want it to work. And the best way that I can go about testing this is by installing something called the Facebook Pixel Helper. So I'm just going to Google Facebook Pixel Helper. It's a Chrome extension. What this essentially allows me to do is when I install this onto my Chrome browser, it will just check on the web page to ensure that the pixel is loading correctly and exactly what events are associated with that pixel on that page as well. So now that's been installed, you can see it up there in the top right, it's ready to go. So I go back to my website, let's go back to the home page. Okay, so on the home page, you can see up in the top right, my pixels fired, I click on that, you can see there it's saying one pixel found on tomwillis.com.au and it's just the page view, which is all that's included in the base pixel firing. If I go to any other page on my site too, you'll be able to see that that's also the only event that's included in there. But when I go through and complete the contact form, so I'll quickly just fill this one out. Cool, so that's all done. It'll redirect me to the confirm page. Now, if you see in the top right now, if I click on my pixel helper, it's now found two events, not just the page view, it's also gone through and found the completed registration as well, which means that my pixel has been successfully implemented and it's firing the complete registration only on the confirmed page. So it's all working, it's all ready to go. So all I need to do now is essentially I go back to my Facebook account and I just need to refresh a couple of times and wait to ensure that it's all set up and ready to go. Uh, one thing I can also do before I, I close all of this is I can actually click on email instructions. So if you want to send this to a developer and get uh, him or her to actually set this up for you, you just need to put in their email address up there at the top and it will include all the instructions on actually setting that up for your account. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh my page and now I've refreshed it and it's actually, it's ready to go. It's, it's still saying that it needs to be set up because it's, it's only new. So what I'm gonna to require to do here, I just need to refresh my browser a couple of times and before it will actually find any of the data across on my pixel. So what you usually do at this step is you, is you can wait, you usually leave it for a day or so. Um, maybe you wanna leave it for a couple of hours just to ensure everything's set up correctly. But if you can see the pixel firing in the Facebook pixel helper, as we saw before, then you're, you're pretty confident that everything's going to work. And it's just now a matter of waiting for the data to pass through into Facebook's uh, advertising infrastructure so that you're able then to, to use the data in there to actually set up your targeting and to report on that as well. So if we just wait for a little bit more time and we'll start refreshing this page as well, slowly be able to see that the data is coming in and then once that data is all in there we'll be able to see who's been visiting what pages of our website how many times the pixels fired 
uh, what devices they've been on, the domains that they've been on as well, and will essentially be ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna refresh here and see if everything's now ready to go. And you can see, yep, beautiful. Okay, so now the pixel has fired. It's all working as per plan. You can see that there's two events that are active in there that Facebook's been able to find. One being the page view event and one being the registration event down in here as well. So they're all working. They're just at zero for now as Facebook's still passing through that data. But if I leave that over the next couple of hours, they'll start to actually get some numbers in them too of how many times those individual uh, pages have been fired and uh, those individual events, sorry, have been fired on the pixel. So you can see through in here that it's given me a little report as well of how many times my pixel's been fired. It's all ready to go. I can check URLs as well and have a look at what pages have been visited on the site. Again, this information's still just being updated. I can check domains and devices as well. Uh, but these are all just, it's, it's in its early stages of being set up at this stage. So what we can do from here, once we've given a bit of time and our data is starting to feed through into the pixel and we're starting to build up quite a robust audience that we can then target on Facebook, what we're able to do from there is actually go and click on create audience in the top left. And from here, we can actually create an audience based on people who have visited our site. So if I click on website traffic, it gives me a number of options. I can choose just to create a generic one of everyone who's just visited my website, which I might wanna do as I'm first getting set up, but I can actually get a little bit more targeted than that too. So if I click on the drop down here, you can see I can choose and you know specific web pages, exclude web pages from that as well. I'm just gonna leave that as generic for now in the last 30 days. And I'm just gonna now give this one a name, which will just be generic create audience. My audience is now ready to go. Beautiful. So now if I go up to the top right and click on create advert, if we go and set up a, a test one here as an example. But now when I go to custom audiences, I can actually use the data from my pixel and the audience that I created, which is my generic one here to actually target whatever advertisement I want them to reach. So it might be something that's a little bit more specific based on, on what's been fired on the pixel. It could just be something generic and you can usually use you know, a little bit of a different copy because they're usually a bit more familiar with your site at this stage. But guys, that's, that's essentially it for today. So I hope this has given you some insight into how you set this up. If you have any questions or if you need this set up on your specific site, please get in touch and let me know. Thanks.